So today we're, we're going to cover transition zone. So transition zone is a topic that um, comes up probably on average once every nine holes you do, maybe twice. So it's not something that, that happens a lot, but it happens enough for us to kind of cover it. And what we're gonna talk about today is a little more on the complicated side in terms of, of, of things that we do. So if you're new, uh, don't, don't be discouraged by this if it goes right over your head, um, you know, that's fine. You'll, you'll get better with it as you see it more. But basically, it, we're just gonna try to make this as simple as possible and just put in some, some uh, thoughts about kind of when, when we are gonna do certain things as part of the transition zone and what's gonna kind of be our default option, which is gonna happen you know, 80 plus percent of the time when we're dealing with with transition zones. So if if those of you if if you can get that one down, you'll be good. And then you can worry about the other 20% of the times or, or as always with everything we do, when it comes to some things that might, might be a little bit more complicated, feel free to ask the captain that's going to be there with you or the experienced person that is going to be paired with you if you're if you're a new new raider. So the concept of a transition zone is is basically when we have um, you know we're 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 looking at uh, golfers when and their their average or their consistent hitting yardages, and basically what this is saying is that is that you that there are going to be certain times where the ball might go a little bit farther, and and we're going to try to you know account for that in some in some form or or another but basically if we look at it from a, from from this perspective we have this chart here and you can see that we we look at it from a one shot or a two shot hole perspective so when we have a one shot hole our transition zone is going to be 10 yards deep and on a two or more shot hole it's going to be 20 yards deep so basically, again, what we're what we're saying is that there's going to be some variance, a little variance based on that normal shot length that we assume the ball goes. So again, for the driver, for the tee shot, for the male, that's we expect it to go 250. And then for the female, we expect it to go 210. But what this chart is saying is that sometimes it could go a little bit more. And so we're, we're, we're going to have some procedure to accommodate that. So you don't really need to think about this because what you'll see when you get on a form one, you'll see that, let me zoom in here. You'll see on a form one that we will have kind of a, a marker to, to know when the, the, a transition zone could potentially come up. So you'll see this under the green target section, a TZ marker that says when we might have a transition zone or when we need to at least think about a transition zone. So it's not something that you're gonna have to evaluate. Um, there might be a scenario, excuse me, if you have to adjust approach shots where, 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 you, would, where you would need to, 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 to know that. But for the time being and for simplicity reasons, when you when when you're when we when you know you have a transition zone, it'll be on your sheet and it'll say TZ, and that and that will be an indicator to know that you're in a in a transition zone and need to think about this this concept that we're going to talk about. So, again, as you can see here, just looking at this form one as an example, this happens one time for the bogey player in the course of these nine holes. So it's not something that happens a lot. But it does, but it does, it's probably going to happen to you at least one time when you're out there on your sheet. So when the rating team determines that the center of the green will be reached significantly more or less than half the time, the transition green target value, which we'll see in a little bit, which you've seen before on our green target page, keyword here is may. Be adjusted up or down one point. 
So for example, if the center of the green is close to the front of the transition zone, it may be appropriate to add one point to the 50-50 transition green target chart value. So when we look at our, our chart here, we're gonna have a separate row at the bottom here for our 50-50 transition zone. So when we see that transition zone on our form one, we're going to start with this chart as a, as a basis. And then as that comment said there, you, you may plus or minus one, if there's, if, if we're gonna be significantly in that transition zone or significantly short of that transition zone. So the way, the way to think about that too, is that we're talking about, you know, the word, this, this word uh, significantly, which means that, you know, when we're talking about 50% of the time, is that that's what we're assuming on transition zone, it's gonna 50-50. We, we, we need to be, you know, well, well beyond that. And so if you just want to keep it simple and not worry about the adding one point or minus a point, that's fine. Just know that this green target value, whenever you see the transition zone marker on your sheet for green target, you're going to go to this bottom column and use that. Okay, that's the simplest way to approach it. Okay, however, um, before we 100% apply this transition zone, we need to make sure there's no effective length corrections or obstacles that would prevent the shot from reaching the green. So we might have a layup or a dog leg that would make this transition zone irrelevant. So if we had a dog leg, of 30, let's do layup because that's just easier to understand. So if we had a layup of 30 yards, now our approach shot here is gonna be impacted by that. So now we're not gonna be in a transition zone and we're actually gonna be outside the transition zone. So if we do the quick math here, we're, we're dealing with a male golfer 553. So our first shot goes 200 yards, correct? So 200 minus 553 is 353. So that's landing zone one. Next shot is 170. I picked a terrible example for this. Um, the next shot is 170. So that's what, one, 183. And so you can see that that 183 is within our transition zone. So if we go back to our chart, that 183 is within our 20 yard transition zone. But now, since we have a 30 yard force layup, our, our real shot is gonna be not 183, but two, 213. And then from 213 minus 170 is what, 43? So that's a scenario there where, because of a forced layup, we now don't have the transition zone. And then we would apply our shot our approach shot to be, or change that to 43, and then we'd, we'd look up our green target value there. Okay, so if, if there are things like that, and there is a transition zone there, if your approach shot changes, then you have to kind of throw that out the window and assume that you need to reevaluate. But let's just say there is no corrective length here. There's no, there's no correction. So basically what we're gonna do is we see this transition zone. We're going to go to our chart, our green, we need to know our effective green diameter, which is 22 here.
So 22 for a male is this column four, and then the 50-50 transition zone is a five value. So then we have our value of five. for our green target there. And then it is it is important to know, so before when we did all that math, our actual shot length that's gonna be coming into the green is 183. And so we'll need, we need to know that um, when we're evaluating our lateral and potential crossing uh, number. So before I go any farther, I just want to make sure that 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 if there's any questions about that, just how we got to that value of five based on the transition zone marker that we see on our form one. Yeah, so there was a question in the chat here about if the if the TZ is due to the down downhill 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 nature of the hole. Uh, no, so the 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 TZ that's in there is just strictly a product of of the math. So when we did that math there, basically our last our approach shot was 183, and that is within our um, target or within our transition chart here. Because on a two or more shot hole, we have a 20 yard deep transition zone. So basically, if our if our approach shot for a fit for a, a male bogey player is between 170 and 190 that TZ is going to is going to show up there and apply and if it was just if it was a one shot hole a par 3 for example for the same bogey male golfer we would have the 200 to to 210 zone that would be in this transition zone, which is right here. So on this particular hole, Kyle, um, I think the kind of following up on that question, if there was a plus one or minus one adjustment, where would you see that happening here? I mean, with this hole being so significantly downhill, there's likely to be um, I'm assuming a roll adjustment, which would shorten that approach shot. If if that was actually the case, would that mean that we would we would um, minus this transition zone number by one? So when when we're when we're talking about the the minus and plusing two, and that's uh, so basically the way the way to think about that is that when if you if you are minusing the, the the green target number, you're you're basically saying that it's less likely that they're going to get there, because the smaller the green target number is, the shorter the approach shot. And if they're more likely to get there because it's downhill, in that case, you would actually plus it to turn it from a five to a six. But without without us being there, it's hard for us to, to say that. But let's just say, for example that we know that in that last shot there, there's there's a downhill slope that's going to help kick the ball towards the green. And in that case, we might say, okay, it's going to definitely get there a significant more, or it's gonna reach the center of the green significantly more than 50% of the time. So we would change the value from five to six in that case. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good, yeah, it's a good good question. Hey, Kyle. Yeah. I think I've worked that out in my head, but it's a little confusing because pluses make the hole harder. Um, is it because the approach shot is now, the green target rating is going to be based on an approach shot that has extra roll. So it's, it's longer and therefore the green target rating would be higher. And that's why the TZ would go up by one. Have I even said that right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. So, so basically, if you think about it, like just looking at the chart, if you, if you have 
right, right, right here, this 50-50 transition zone, and I probably should have done a better job explaining it. So basically what we're doing in this 50-50 transition zone is we're saying that 50% of the time they're going to reach and 50% of the time they're not. So basically what it's doing is it's taking an average of a really short green target value and a really long green target value. And so what all we're saying is that if it's if it's more likely to get there, then our our value should be higher because it's it's going to be less likely to end up short and more likely to end up long. And the longer it is, the the the, the higher the number is. So if we take this value of like 180, um, what was it 180? Um, I don't remember what it was. 183, right? So 183 typically for a bogey golfer is going to be a seven. Whereas you have a value of a, shot, a short shot is going to be a two for this 22 that we were in. So basically the average of that is a five. But what we're saying now is that it's more, it's, it's more likely going to be in this 180 plus range. So we're going to adjust it closer to the seven. Kyle, if there is a significant downhill roll, I mean, if I was rating that hole, and maybe I'm not doing it right, but um, I would be making a roll adjustment and changing the um, the adjusted approach shot length. So roll is roll is for tee shots only, I believe. Um, I, I thought it was for subsequent is subsequent full shots for scratch and bulky. Page twelve of the manual. Keyword: full shots. So if that's a full shot coming into the green, yeah, um, roll can be adjusted, and I would be a adjusting the um, length of the approach shot. So yeah, so you could do that for sure. Um, and it might just take you right out of the TZ. Cor correct, and, that, and, and, that, and that's, that, that, that's kind of, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, that's, that, that's, if we're gonna, if it's gonna be significant enough to take us out of the TZ, then, then yeah, but in this case, it would need to, it would need to roll, you know, more than 15 yards for it to take us out of the TZ. Right. So I, I'm not familiar with that hole, but the, yeah. the, it sounded like it was pretty significant downhill to the. Um, right. Well, to, yeah, and we don't and we don't know, you know, because because a lot of it too is it's because when we look at that elevation, it's 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 T to green. Sure. Right. So, but, but let's just if we if we're in a transition zone that's 13 yards, in order for us to have to actually adjust the um, approach at length. You know, and, and get it out of the transition zone. It would need to be 15 yards, right? Um, so, so and not not saying that it could couldn't happen, but you know that could be a scenario where right. where you 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 could you could have a roll adjustment, um, but but typically, and I probably wouldn't do it for 15 yards because it's so close. I mean, that's right. like you know you're guessing at that point. But if it was going to be like 20 or 30 yards, right? Then I'd probably do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what, okay, so, so, so yeah, so Mike, I think that was correct. So, so subsequent, um, Mike Brady made a comment, sub, subsequent full shots only qualify for the two adjustment role applies to the T shot. So that's, I think, I think basically, yeah, it's, that, 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 that was my understanding as well is that, um, is that we're only, we're only looking at, at roll on the on the uh, on the on the tee shot, but I guess it does also say. Hold on, let, give me one minute to read this really quick. Kyle, while you're reading that, John, yep. I'll yep. uh, lower an example and to others that are listening. Uh, we'll wind up 
approaching a green that's a little bit elevated so the shot will not roll as far it sticks into the hill okay so you will not be making the center of the green with that tz if that makes any sense this is a bad example of 180 some odd feet down or whatever it is right and john the the problem is is we as several of us have discussed and the sticky wicket here is is that when that occurs and you determine that it's not going to occur very um they're, they're not going to reach it very often um the the sticky wicket is to make the wrong adjustment as carmody pointed out is you know if what that's going to result in is a short shot to the green because you're going to abandon the idea that they're getting there you're going to end up with a short shot to the green which will ultimately lower the green target and you'd lower your transition number if you've got a long shot in there and you've determined as we were talking about in this example that it's downhill and generally downhill shots mean it it's going to go a little further and more than half of the time or more than 75% of the time you're going to get uh, to that green. Uh, that means that a longer shot is getting to the green and therefore the adjustment needs to go plus one. Um, the safe bet is to generally pick the number that's on the bottom row because you're going to be within one of where you're supposed to be any time. So that's all I would say to that. No, and that's what I instruct my people is just use the transition zone. It's a lot easier uh, because you're gonna be so close to the front of the green. In other words, what I'm saying is when you hit have impact, it's not gonna roll as far when you've got the situation I described. But then you've got either a putt or a tiny little chip, you know, to get up towards the hole. Yeah, so um, yeah, I agree with, with Mark, with with what he said in terms of you know when in, when in doubt use the 50 50 transition rating rating value because um, it's going to be close close enough but there could be situations where that plus or one plus or minus one would would be applicable um, so after reading the role and, and getting another comment from from um, from Mike so when we're talking about role with the adjustments in the in the chart apply to the tee shot and if there are subsequent adjustments the only adjustment that we make there is a two adjustment so we're not we're not applying so we're, we're not applying the you know minus one to minus four for that second shot only the tee shot second shot or or more subsequent full shot is just a two two plus adjustment So in this in this case, if we had let's just use the let's just say that in theory that the downhill nature of this hole made it more likely that that shot would reach the center of the green, then we would we would if we if we felt strongly about that and it was significant, then we would say okay we're going to change that value of a five to a six. Okay, sounds good. Okay, there was another, I guess, um, there's, there's another question that came out of it. Okay, so there was a question that's not related to transition zone, but we can still, I'll still answer it. Um, so there's a question on hole number nine on this form one here. If there, if there is a carry, <clears throat> how do we, how do we rate it for the bogey offer? Because in this, this example here, our bogey offer hits at 200 yards. If there's if there's a carry, you know what do we do there? And basically, what that what we're saying here is that if they hit at 200 yards off the tee, the bogey offer, it's going to come down in the air at 180. So if there's a force carry near the green and the and our shot would land in that water, let's say, then we're going to have a force layup in that scenario, where we would we would lay up the golfer short. And then and then and then play from there. If that's not possible, 
on a hole, sometimes par threes don't have that, then there's, there's a procedure in the book um, that covers how to, how to rate a hole when a bogey golfer can't make a carry. And we won't go over that, but there is a procedure in the book. Um, if someone wants to find that page and write it in the chat, that'd be, feel free to do that. Okay, so again, when we're doing our transitions on first, we need to make sure that there's no effective length corrections that would get us out of the transition zone. Um, we talked about like a layup that, that would do that. Um, it could also be a roll off a tee shot um, or a bunker in front of the green. We might have a scenario where it is just, there's just zero chance that the ball is gonna get there because it's gonna be, I shouldn't say zero, but it's, there's, it's gonna be less than less than 50% chance of the time because there, there's a bunker that's covering the front of the green or a bunker that's partially covering the front of the green that's gonna collect a lot of balls and prevent them from getting there. Okay, so once we've determined the green target value, which again, our, our strong recommendation is to use this 50-50 transition zone value unless there's clear evidence that uh, we're gonna either get there more than 50% or significantly less than 50% than, than of the time. I, sh I should add the word a, a significantly to both. It's significantly more than 50%, significantly less than, than, than 50%. So we're talking about you know, not like 40%, not uh, 60%. We're talking, I, I can't, I'm not going to put a number on it because the USA it doesn't give us a number, but, you know, I would, I would think about it like it probably need to be like 25% or less or 75% or more for us to apply that plus one adjustment or minus one adjustment. Just a, a rule of thumb to, to think about. So if a player reaches the center of the green 50% uh, or more of the time, then we're gonna rate the hole using that uh, shot for the approach length. So this is gonna be our default, okay? So this is um, scenario one, which is gonna happen the majority of the time. If, we, if the player is short and is uh, of the green more than 50% of the time, then we're going to assign an area 10 yards short of the front edge, front edge of the green as a landing zone from where the approach shot will be played. And we're gonna rate, rate the hole using uh, that area for the approach shot information. So basically what we're doing is we are, um, a, we're, we're basically just looking at another additional landing zone at that point. It's a, one way to think about it. Okay, so about 90 or 80 plus times out of 100, you're gonna do this top one, this default, excuse me, this, this default one where we're just, we're just going to rate the hole using that approach shot. So here, there's an example here we'll go through, but we can go through this example on our form one too. So basically what we're, what we're gonna do here is that we did the math and out already. So our number, our approach shot is 183. And our green target value is five. So our our rough our R and R or rough and recoverability is going to be based off this five value. And so is the bunkers. That's not going to to be impacted at all. Then our crossing, where if we have any crossing, would be based off of this 183 yard shot. But we don't have any crossing here, so that's going to be zero. And then if we scroll down a little bit, and of course my thing doesn't move, but so we're L32 for our lateral here. So basically when we look at our lateral, um, we, we are gonna assume that our approach shot length is 183, and that's what we're gonna use to evaluate this 32. So when we go to our chart for lateral, it asks us to look at a distance for the shot, and so for that shot to the green, 
In this case, we're going to use 183 to come up with that number there. That might not necessarily be the number that at the end of the day wins or is the one we put on our sheet, but that's the one that we're going to evaluate for that shot to the green. All right, clear this. So in the in the example here, we have a 380 yard hole. Okay. And we determined that the golf, the golfer is going to reach the center of the green at least 50% of the time. Okay. So that means that we're going to rate it with the approach shot as is. We're going to have that 50-50 transition zone value from our green from our green target chart, which is gonna be a five. So 25 green diameter to the 50-50, 25, oops, 25 column four to 50-50 is a five. So that's how they got that value. And then we're gonna use our standard, we're gonna use that number to get our R and R in our bunker. There's no adjustment, so that's what the values come to. They say, I think the green, the uh, rough height is two and a quarter, I believe, in this in this example, yeah, two and a quarter. And then when we're looking at our other obstacles, we look at topography. We looked at it in the in the um, fairway landing zone, and we determined that it was a one. We're not going to look at it near the green because we're assuming that this the we're, we're basically playing this shot to get to the green this one this 180 shot our fairway is based off of our first shot our first landing zone and then our lateral obstacle is a is a five here but we're looking at um so there's there's nothing in the fairway so there's no fairway value and then at the green though we have 180 yard shot with 17 yards penalty area to the left. So if we if we um, if we think that or if we determine that the player will not reach the center of the green at least 50% of the time, then we're going to have an additional landing zone and we're going to rate it as a three shot hole. So we'll still use, in this case, we're still gonna use that 50-50 value for the green target. Okay, and we're still gonna have the same R and R value, but in this case here, there is an additional adjustment because we're basically now, instead of assuming that it's gonna get to the green, we're taking a distance that's 10 yards short of the front of the green, which I think they've determined to be right here. And we're going to, to use that, that value to look at some of the other obstacles. So the fairway, the crossing, lateral, um, and, and trees as well. So when we do that, we're now going to have two fairway values to look at. The second one ended up being the one that we will use. And then for the lateral, we're going to have two landing zones to look at, actually three, because we have the short one to the green as well. And then trees, they determined what were the same for all the landing zones or didn't, they didn't create any higher value because of that additional landing zone. So it's still a two. So does that, does that basically make, does that make sense to people that if we, if we don't think, or if we determine that the, the player will not reach the center of the green at least 50% of the time, then we're just going to have an additional landing zone that's going to be 10 yards short of the front of the green. And then we're going to gather the values from that point 
and do just like we would if it was a par five or a three shot hole where we're gonna look at all the other um, values and then we're gonna take the, 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 the higher one. Okay, so then there was a question about how does the minus one option, how the minus one option was evaluated for the green target. So in this in this example here, we 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 didn't we we didn't make that plus or minus one adjustment. We just we just went what was based in that in that chart or off off the bottom row. So there was no there was no adjustment from this five number that that, that we got to. We 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 used that because we determined that the golfer didn't significantly um, or, or or didn't reach the green significantly more or significantly less than than uh, 50 percent so we still use that value of five because basically in our in our example here what what we're assuming with a transition zone is that we're already assuming a 50 50 outcome or close to a 50 50 outcome and so if it's going to be if it's going to be significantly more than that, then we would make that adjustment to the green target. But if it's going to be significantly less, then we're going to we're going to make the minus adjustment. So so this this these two examples that we that we just went through um, here or on this page here. Like this is this is what you're you're going to see the majority of the time when you deal with the transition zone. So when we're not we're not making any adjustment to the green target value, and we're basically just determining if the if the player is going to reach the center of the green at least fifty percent of the time, then we're going to rate like we did in this in this uh, first example here. But if we think that's going to be less than 50% of the time, then, then we're going to create that second landing zone. I guess that was where my question was, is in the second example. Mm -hmm. If we if he's not, if the player is not reaching the green 50% uh, of the time, in other words, basically we're saying in most cases he's not going to reach the green. That's why I asked the question about was there an evaluation of adding adding or subtracting one in this case subtracting one yeah yeah so i think i think if i understand your your question correctly i think one way to put it is that if it, if we are adding that additional landing zone in we're not automatically subtracting one from the green target value because we still have the, the wiggle room of less than 50 percent or significantly less than 50 percent and so I don't I don't think we would we would make that adjustment to the green target value minus one unless it was you know significantly less. So without putting, I mean, I guess just to put some numbers on it, let's just assume that if it's like 49 to let's call it like 30, 33%, then we're gonna just do it with that extra landing zone. And then if it's less than 33%, then we would do it with that with that second landing zone, but also minus one for the green target. Okay, and then what and then in the um, in the in the book here, there is the the uh, same same example with a female golfer that is in that similar transition zone, the 290 yard hole. So we kind of have that same, the really the exact same application, just different values because of, of the charts being different. But basically we have that same, um, the, the female bogey offer can hit it 150 off the tee and then she hits her second shot 130. So within that, uh, you know, 20 yard window, 
is 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 that is that 290 yards so we're in we're in transition zone here and so same thing same same exact same thing if we're determining the player will reach the green at least 50 percent of the time then we're just going to rate it as a two-shot hole with that second approach shot for her being 140 yards and then if we think that she's going to not reach the green at least 50 percent of the time then we'd have an additional landing zone So there was a, there was a question about if you rate it as a three shot hole would would it be wouldn't it be a layup by choice or some something else like a layup like that so so this one is is not is not is not a layup by choice um, because we're not we're not laying up the golfer here we're we're just applying what the the USA wants us to do when it comes to a transition zone so we're we're still we're still assuming in the, in these cases that the golfer is going to get there at least part of the time whether it's you know <clears throat> somewhere between 49 to 1% of the time the golfer is still going to reach the green in the, in these cases so we're not we're not laying up a layup, but we, uh, we assume that the golfer gets there 0% of the time. So there's still the possibility that they're going to get there. So that's why we have to, to evaluate that, that last approach shot landing zone area there. Or not, not, not approach shot, that last landing zone there, 10 yards shorter than green. Then the last thing here is that if we have the the same thing for a for a par three, our transition zone is ten yards deep, and the process is the same with the decision being whether the hole we successfully played with the long approach shot that reaches the center of the green at least fifty percent of the time, or a shorter shorter approach shot uh, will be required more than more than fifty percent of the time. So the so the, these are all, and the reason that we waited to cover this to the very end is because it is it is complicated, um, no doubt. And we basically what what we would um, suggest that you do is that unless there is really really you know I hate to use the words. Uh, significant because it's already in there but unless there's something out there that's that's really going to force you to to do it a different way the 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 best a, a way to handle these when you see transition zones is just to use the value that's in this green target chart here and then assume that they're going to get there at least 50 percent of the time so that's why we want it to be this our default option and when we do it, when we assume that, then the process is much easier because it's very, it, it's 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 almost exactly what we're used to doing. Um, basically, all we all we have to do now is we're just adjusting that approach shot, and we're not necessarily even adjusting it on the form. We're just we're just assuming that instead of instead of thinking about it as a full second shot, it's going to be a tad bit longer when it comes to the yardages and that could impact the final number that we have for some of for for some of these obstacles, primarily crossing and, and lateral, because if we assume that they're going to get there 50% of the time, our topography is going to get be solely from our first landing zone back in the fairway back here. Our fairway is going to be solely from back here. And the only thing that's going to be that we're going to have to look at with this transition zone is any potential crossing or our lateral obstacle, which is now going to be based off of the 183 in our example that we did on our form one. Or in this case here, because it's 380, it would be a 180 approach shot.
All right, is, are there any questions? Is that a little less confusing, more confusing? Does anyone want to quit course rating after hearing that? <laughs> uh, Kyle. Yeah. This is this is Brian. Sure. Um, I guess I'm looking at the uh, transition zone now. If there was a bunker in. Uh, if there was a bunker, do they consider bunkers in that transition zone? And are you accounting for the bunker through the transition zone or are you uh, uh, just as a bunker? Yeah, so so we, we, would, we would definitely look at the bunkers um, in, in this case. So let's just use this, this example that's on the picture here. So when if we have a if we use the transition zone concept where we're assuming that they get to the green more than 50% of the time, this bunker right here, that short right, is going to be accounted for under the under our green side bunker um, only. If, if we are assuming that they're not going to get there 50% of the time, then we're going to have this short landing zone. So we're, we're going to, we're, it's this green side bunker is going to be not only applicable to the green side value, but it's also going to be a fairway bunker for this landing zone because it's in our landing zone there. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good question. And, and the other thing too, uh, just about that, um, just it, the other, the other thing too, we, 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 we mentioned is that some things to consider about the likelihood of a ball getting to the green. If this bunker was, a little bit more uh, out towards the center here, you know that that could have a significant impact on the percentage of the chance of the ball getting to the green, and so that might you know tilt our scale to the less than fifty percent of the time if this bunker did in fact go out to maybe here, then then you know then we might have less than fifty percent of the time because the bunker is going to catch a lot of the balls that come up. But in this case, the bunker is slightly covering the front, but not but not enough for us to, to say that it's less than 50% of the time. <laughs> um, so there are a couple of comments about the uh, Thank goodness this only comes up once or twice during the during the the, the rating. That's that's for sure. Um, and I, honestly, I think this is something that you know, especially as as you as you uh, you know do this for for the first couple of times, or even in the for your first couple of years, if you can just get the the our what we're going to call our default down, where you use the the row or the uh, value from the fifty fifty. Um, line and the green target, and you assume that they're going to get there more than fifty percent of the time. If you if you can do that and do that pro properly, you're going to be like you know really good off. And then as you learn a little bit more, you see situations that where you might run into this less than fifty percent of the time. Then then you know great. But if you do it the more than more than fifty percent of the time, if you do if you do that this this one here. If you do this 100% of the time, you know, you're, you're, you're only, you're only going to be off a little bit. And we'll, in our experience, people will, will help point out those situations where there, there are factors that could um, cause it to not be in, in, in this normal option. Kyle, this is Leroy. Um, yeah. Uh, for the newer people, uh, keep in mind. Uh, keep in mind when we all get to the green uh, on each hole, we have discussions, and our captains, when this situation arises, will help us make the, the uh, determination as to how we're going to use or how we think about this particular hole, and that will help each of each of the raters to uh, make their final ratings. For the whole, right? Yeah, no, that's that, that's a great point. I mean, it's not we're not uh, 
yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about this. And if there are, you know, situations that, um, you know, could, could make this concept a little tricky, then yeah, the, the captain will be there to help out. And, and, and even if, you know, cause it's, it's tough too, cause every golfer is, is in a little bit different landing zone and has different values. But if you, if you ever have a question about the transition zone, yeah, definitely get with the captain and, and uh, he, he or her will, will definitely be able to help you with this. All right. So um, this was this was really all I had planned to cover for today. Um, but so in terms of of uh, you know next week at this at this point in time um, we're I, I'm not we're not we're probably not going to schedule anything for next week. Um, we we're 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 still going to look to do something the last um, Thursday of March, so the 25th, um, but that will more than likely be a kind of overview, basically going through a, a, a hole on Google Earth and kind of trying to fill out a form one. So it'll probably be more geared to, to newer folks, but um, as of right now, because we got everything covered, uh, we're not, we're not gonna be planning on doing a session next week. I promise it has nothing to do with March Madness, even though I'm a diehard March Madness fan. Um, and I'll definitely be glued to my TV, but um, I thought about that well before planning these sessions at 10, so they'd be, they'd be done by noon. So um, with all that being said, I will, uh, we'll, we'll stay on here um, for the, if there's any other questions, it doesn't have to be transition zone related. It could be anything related. Um, but if, if there's any questions, feel free to let us know. And, um, we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you or some of you in a, in a couple of weeks and we'll, we'll have some more information now. Uh, we're in the process of getting the, uh, dates scheduled and uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll have those posted on the uh, volunteer website to, to sign up for. We'll be sending out some, some more information about that once, once we have those available. I had a question, Kyle. Yeah. Um, when I was looking at the uh, uh, week seven yesterday, um, that's the one thing I thought about. Is there somewhere where I could download uh, or, or print a copy of the, uh, what's that, the sheet? So I could look at it right here versus, cause I'm, I'm looking at the book and I'm looking at what you're writing on the screen from the videos, but I, I'm not seeing a sheet in front of me where I can. Sure. Yeah, yeah there, there is a, a blank um, form one and a completed form one on the um, volunteer page of the GAM website. So if you log into okay. your GAM account and go and, and go through there. There, there, there is a, a sample sheet on there. A couple. Of and I'll, I'll email you after this too with some more resources on, on about going to that. If it sounds like you have already, but I can get you to where you need to be. Okay. Thanks. Yep. All right. These have been great, Kyle. Thank you. Yep. Yep. There, there was uh, one question that came in about if the hole is, and I think it was, it was answered in the chat, but if there, if the hole is uh, 391 yards, so beyond that 20 yard transition zone value, does does a TZ apply? And the answer to that is no, it only applies if it's within that 20 yards. If it's 391, then we're gonna have, um, it'll be a three shot hole for that bogey gawker. And our approach shot length would be 21 listed there. And our value would be based off, our green target value would be based off of that. Thank you, Kyle. Nice job, appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you.